Okay, let's take a look at a question related to asset retirement obligations. Blink Corp erected and placed into service an offshore, offshore oil platform on January 1st, 2020 at a cost of 10 million. Blink Corp is legally required to dismantle and remove the platform at the end of its nine year loose, useful life. We've got nine years now. Blink Corp estimates that it will cost 1 million to dismantle and remove the platform at the end of its useful life and that the discount rate should be 8%. Okay. So the first thing it asks us to do is using, and it gives us a variety of ways that we can do this, using uh, factor tables, a financial calculator, or an Excel present value function, prepare the entry to record the asset retirement obligation. Assume that none of the 1 million cost relates to production. So essentially we're being told that the entire 1 million cost relates to, um, relates to the acquisition of this asset. So, what that would look like. Okay, so what we need to do is take one, we know that the present value, or we don't know the present value, sorry, we know the future value of the obligation is 1 million. So let's write down what we know. We know the future value is 1 million. And we know the discount rate, or I, is going to be 8%, we're given that right here. And we know that N, which is the number of years, is eight, or sorry, nine, nine years in the question. And that there are no payments because asset retirement obligations are only paid um, when the asset is retired. So with this information, we can calculate the present value from our financial calendar. So let's give that a go. We're gonna put in We're going to put in those numbers and push compute present value. And so the present value that we get from going through that is 500, 248.97. And it says to round it to the nearest dollar. So we're going to round this to 500, 249. Okay. So this is the present value of the million dollars. So again, we know that we discount asset retirement obligations because this is nine years later. It's gonna cost us a million. So we don't put the entire million on our books right now because a million dollars in nine years is actually only worth $500,249 um, according to the discount that we've been provided. So the entry to put, prepare the entry. So we're asked to prepare the entry, okay? So what entry are we gonna record? So we're gonna go debit, uh, asset or drilling platform. Usually we specify what asset it is, but it is an asset. This is gonna be the 500 249. Because we acquired that asset and we're gonna go credit, liability, ARO 500 Okay, perfect. So we've got the first part of this question done. So let's see what the next question is. We've got this. Prepare any necessary adjusting entries that are associated with the asset that are associated with the asset at December 31st, assuming that A, Blaine Corp follows I for S and ASB. Ignore production related costs for this question. Okay. So what, what adjusting entries would we have to record? So we're going to need to record two adjusting entries. So we need to increase the present value of the asset retirement obligation. And we also need to depreciate the asset. So we've got the, um, the increase in present value because as we get every year that we get closer to the 10 to the year nine the the closer that this number is going to get to that million because we're getting closer to the actual year that we're going to have to pay it we know we're going to have to pay a million and we're going to have to depreciate the asset okay so let's see what that looks like so let's first do i for s what would that look like? So the first thing, let's do the depreciation first because we know how to do that. So we're just going to go debit, depreciation expense. 
and that's going to be what's the amount. So we're going to say, okay, our asset is 500, 249. We're just going to do straight line depreciation for nine years. That's going to give us 55,583 per year. Okay. So this is going to be our 55,583. And then we're going to go credit accumulated depreciation drilling platform. Okay, so this is just really consistent with what we learned in uh, financial accounting one, and we're simply just depreciating that asset. Okay, the next thing that we're going to need to do is we are going to need to, so this is our depreciation, and the next thing we're going to need to do is increase our present value. And what does that look like? Well, we're going to go debit. Now, I for us calls this interest expense. So we're going to recognize our interest expense. And this is going through our income statement, of course. And we're going to credit our ARO obligation because we're increasing the value of that ARO. Like we said here, we know that this liability, this ARO, is going to get closer to a million as we go on. So now the question is, how? what's the amount of this? So what we're going to do is we're just going to take 500, 249. And we're going to multiply it by 8% because we're going to have one, one year of the increase in the present value. And that's going to give us 40,020. So that is what we're going to increase it by for year one. 40,020. Okay, so that's what IFRS looks like. Now the question is, if we were to do this under ASPI, what would be different? Well, there's one thing that's great. Entry number one, the depreciation is exactly the same. No change, no change. Exactly the same entry. So we're gonna have debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. Now the second entry, which is the increase in the present value is different only because here for IFRS, we called it interest expense. And the entry is exactly the same for ASPI, but it's going to be called debit accretion expense. And that's because we're accreting or increasing the value of the present value, that uh, the present value towards the future value of the million. And then credit ARO. So very, very, very similar. Just the only difference in the entries between the depreciation and increasing the present value is that IFRS increases when you're increasing the present value, you're debiting interest expense and ASPI debits accretion expense, but the entries are the same and the credit goes to the ARO either way. So now the ARO we have on our books would be this 500,249 plus the 40,020. 40, okay, so now we've done the second part of this question. So the third part, Assume that the increase in the asset retirement obligation in 2020 related to production of oil was 61,942. Prepare any necessary entries to record the increase in under IFRS or ASPI. Okay. So now we're going to have a third type of an entry, which is an increase in the ARO. And there is a difference here again. So let's take a look at IFRS first. So IFRS is going to we're just going to take that same number. So the question said the increase was 61,942. So IFRS is going to go debit inventory. So IFRS puts that increase into inventory so that when we sell the goods, then we're expensing um, that product cost. And the credit is going to go to ARO, of course, because the ARO has increased as a result of production. And ASPI is very similar, it's the same amount but the debit is gonna to go to the asset. So it's actually gonna to go to the drilling platform. So they don't put it into inventory, they continue to capitalize it into the cost of the asset. Uh, IFRS will only let you capitalize it into the asset upon acquisition. Any further increase in the costs are going to get added into inventory under IFRS. So that's the big difference here is this change um, between inventory and the drilling platform. So we finished that part of the question. So I hope that makes sense. There is one more video where I'm gonna go through one more asset retirement obligation. You can take a look at that if you wanna continue with your review on this topic.